Hello everybody, this is Alfonso speaking from CXO Cockpit, today's partner webinar for those folk viewing today's session. I'm going to be the voice in today's session. Let me just um, introduce myself and today's agenda. Here's a picture of me. I'm the regional director responsible for new business and existing customers and partners across the UK, Ireland and Nordics. But what you're about to see today is applicable across the whole of CXO globally. My agenda today is share with you the CXO customer value proposition um, and what it means specifically for um, our partners, existing partners and new partners. I'm going to give you a short demonstration of the solution, show you it live in action working. I'll be controlling it and share that with you. Then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the partner agreement, the different types of partners and what incentives there are in terms of generating revenue for yourselves as individual partners to CXO Cockpit. If time allows, I will take some questions at the end. So uh, let's have a look. CXO Cockpit, a couple of slides related to ourselves. It's our 10th year anniversary, founded in 2007. This October is our 10th year anniversary, um, 10 years servicing CXO Cockpit for global organizations headquartered in Utrecht. Um, but we have multiple sales and delivery offices across the UK, Nordics, USA and the, the, the DAC region. Um, we've got quite a few strategic and global partnerships already in place to reach new audiences. Most of our development of the solution is done in-house based in our headquarters in Utrecht. Just to give you a flavor for some of the global organizations already using CXO Cockpit on top of their planning, budgeting, forecasting and consolidation systems which I'll go into a little bit of detail in a couple of moments, but these are some of the names that are using CXO Cockpit and are very referenceable and happy to use CXO Cockpit on the top of those source systems right across many different global regions as we can see here. So what is the value proposition of CXO Cockpit? What do we deliver? Well, let's just talk a little bit about traditional EPM reporting. So when we think about EPM reporting, enterprise performance management reporting, we're talking about month end reporting, management reporting, uh, board pack reporting that brings together financial and non-financial um, information for management to make decisions about the performance of the business. We tend to see that the traditional approach um, is collecting data from underlying source systems as per the uh, list on the left hand side. So in the SAP world, you may have data sat in SAP BPC as an example. In the Oracle world, as an example, organizations may be storing planning, budgeting, forecasting data in Hyperion or SBase um, uh, as a couple of examples. And we tend to see that those systems tend not to have really good um, reporting. Uh, processes in place to enable the report pack generation to be completed. It tends to be extracted into the world of Excel, as you can see by the graphical representation of this image. The extraction uh, generally is done manually. Um, it needs to be then um, created into a reporting pack that makes sense for the target audience, KPIs, calculations, commentary, um, etc need to be um, pulled together uh, to produce that end reporting pack that's required for the business user. So the difference between CXO Cockpit and that particular picture is essentially to streamline that particular process. So organizations are still going to have data in those end source systems. Um, but what we want to do is have a secure environment to actually bring that data into the world of CXO Cockpit to deliver the value that those end customers are looking for. And on the right hand side of the screen, we should be able to see now the value being generated, which is the ability to automate the production of the reporting pack. Um, we have a very clever way of adding commentary or narrative 
to the actual data that's within CXO cockpit, therefore adding that commentary data as part of a workflow process. Any dashboard that's been uh, built and visible for the audience can be taken and shared with another user within the business um, with a specific commentary or question that you may have um, instead of doing it outside of the solution in the likes of email or even by phone call you can now actually do it within the solution looking at exactly the same information on the screen as your colleague would be it's very beneficial for internal communication and collaboration we're able to link together any data source so although on the left of the uh, screen we can see that there are a number of key source systems um, listed here but in addition to that CXO cockpit has developed a specific data warehouse adapter which allows connectivity to other systems either directly into a data warehouse or using simply a flat file Excel you load a kind of operation to bring in let's say for instance non-financial data which could be headcount data CRM data um, etc most of the dashboards that are delivered and created within CXO cockpit are um, ready for mobile um, and iPad ready. We have an Android and um, iPad app already in the App Store ready to uh, be used as a demo environment as well. But as part of the deployment, once um, a dashboard is created in CXO Cockpit, it's available through mobile devices as well. And because it's um, a, a, a dashboard solution, one would expect to be able to drill down on a number so you can look at a revenue number at a group level and drill down through the individual hierarchy of the business to deliver uh, a broader and deeper insight into the actual data itself and finally the solution currently is on premise I say currently there is development uh, taking place this year with a potential launch date of the end of uh, Q4 or possibly Q1 of early next year of a, a cloud-based um, solution of CXO cockpit but currently it's deployed on-premise uh, within the customer's environment um, and then finally we have uh, the calculation engine and ability so if you think about bringing in data from multiple data sources one needs to be able to join that data together and possibly do some kind of calculations with it so we need to have a calculation engine to be able to take care of that as well as other simple calculations or even complex calculations related to um, information or KPIs that need to be calculated uh, within any dashboard process <clears throat> So just to be very clear that CXO Cockpit is not a BI tool. So some of the things that you see today might suggest that CXO Cockpit uh, looks like a typical business intelligence tool. And if I could just pause for one second. So typically organizations would have um, other business intelligence <coughs> solutions like Tableau, ClickView, even Oracle, OBI, EE, and they're still deploying CXO Cockpit for financial reporting. Traditionally, BI tools that we look at them and just to differentiate between the two, typically a business intelligence tool is made for operational reporting or dashboards within the business. Um, but from a financial perspective, they don't carry the capability of providing the information in the way that accountants wish to view the financial performance related to um, balance sheet cash flow waterfall charts even simple things like formatting or even adding commentary uh, appear to be missing or uh, are considered to be very difficult to do within a traditional bi solution so typically i would look at a bi tool to be operational um, uh, data exploration and analysis whereas CXO cockpit is aimed squarely at the office of finance the CFO the group financial controller providing that financial and non-financial view of the business so just very quickly on um, benefits to use an individual partner we have an example of a particular customer here um, that brought to CXO Cockpit uh, a particular 
end customer that obviously is not named here but um, essentially um, you can see that typically the organization were using Excel to deliver reporting for the business and wanted to actually improve the speed of delivery of those reports to those end users and the collection of information to those end users. So they deployed CXO Cockpit through the partner um, and delivered these five key items at the bottom of the screen. So faster reporting for that particular organization. Centrally controlled. So if you think about multiple Excel spreadsheets in the original version, we now have one view of the performance of the business that every person within the business who has access and security control would be able to view it. So it really is that single version of the truth. Um, standardization of multi-sources. So the benefits there are truly having the ability now to bring in multiple sources of data uh, and actually um, ensure that um, everybody is working from that same perspective. No longer do individuals go to meetings and argue about whether the number is correct. Now it's more about why is the number and the variance different direct costs have increased by maybe 3%. What is the reason for that? And once we have the context in terms of commentary to actually say, okay, well, what can we do about it as a business? So it's more proactively managing the performance of the business. And the direct access is to the actual numbers themselves and not having to worry about, um, I have the latest version on Excel or even in a PDF PowerPoint. I can see almost daily the numbers change from a revenue perspective if I wish to have that particular access. And of course, what you'll see in the demonstration in a couple of moments is the interactivity and how easy it is to use CXO Cockpit. I'm going to do the demonstration for you. And um, so it's going to be quite easy for end users in the finance function to be able to deliver. So with that in mind, I am going to just pause for a second and do a live demonstration for the audience now. So just bear with me one second while I switch over to my live demo environment. So what you can see is I've switched over to um, a VMware where I have a copy of CXO Cockpit onto my desktop computer. And I have essentially switched over to the demo environment. I've signed in using a browser. So the access to CXO Cockpit uses the um, all the leading browsers. I'm currently using Chrome, but you can use any of the other uh, leading browsers in the marketplace. Um, and I've signed in as a, an administrator. So you can see in the top right of the screen, my role is a supervisor. So I'm signed in as a supervisor, which gives me administration access. Um, it helps in the demonstrations because I can see the back end of the solution, i.e. the CXO designer, which is where we develop all of these dashboards. And again, time permitting, I will <clears throat> share with you how we actually go ahead and build one of these dashboards. And again, that simplicity from a partner's perspective and how you can actually manage it on behalf of an end customer. Or if an end customer wishes to do it themselves, you can train them and show them how to actually perform this, these individual tasks. So just very quickly about the organization and what we've created so you can understand what we're looking at. I'm highlighting now Comma Communications Inc, which is a fictitious company that we've created. We can see that I'm looking at data from 2015. I've got data going back in time. I'm looking at a period of September. Again, I can move the periods backwards and forwards here. And I'm looking at the entity structure here. So those connectors that I talked about a little bit earlier on um, indicate that I have got CXO cockpit sat in my example here on HFM, um, the Hyperion data set. And because of that connectivity, we are reading the data directly from that underlying source system. It means that, as you can see, this entity structure box here, I'm not actually configuring this particular box. CXO cockpit is just looking for the data that resides under the word entity in the um, in the in the, the hierarchical structure from the underlying source system, so you can appreciate there that if you're talking to customers who are quite acquisitive, 
and or even they change their hierarchical or reporting structure on a regular basis and they do that in their underlying source system then it will appear here automatically and yes see so cockpit does actually support uh, multiple hierarchies as well from a reporting perspective so you can actually leverage that particular feature as well so that means that we're reading the data directly from the underlying source system um, which is very beneficial and fast in terms of the example I gave a little bit earlier on what else can we see on the screen well we can see a table of information at the top showing me a small P&L starting with net sales uh, down to uh, DPO I'm looking at a chart of information in the middle and then right at the bottom we can see a commentary field so here we're looking at commentary connected to the dashboard that's in front of me I can look at lots of different dashboards by going up to the top of the screen so here we have a file structure which shows me all the different um, files or dashboards that have been added to this particular version of CXO cockpit as I scroll through these particular names so capital cash and so on these are customizable so I can change the name of these um, and also the reports that are contained within them if I wish I can also search for reports so if I'm looking for let's say I know I have one called trend but I can't remember where I've stored it I can just start typing instantly any report that has the word trend within it will appear here in this small thumbnail image I can click on the report the dashboard will open straight away also the system will indicate to me in orange as you can see here that that's where that individual report was stored so that's a little bit about migrating within the solution itself but equally we can actually drill into the data to do further analysis and let me show you a couple of other features the CXO cockpit has so wherever we see a drop down that means that I can actually change the column of information listed here so currently I'm looking at budget information as a column but I can actually change that to forecast information so again clicking on straight away uh, the link will actually go away fetch the data present it live on the screen we can see here the actual forecast against actual year to date against gross margin is highlighted here by this particular um, information um, also I can drill down into the data so here I'm looking at the cost center direct costs I would like to know what direct costs are made up of well you can see here there's a small plus sign it means that I've enabled a drill down capability we can see that the other ones don't have drill down so you can actually therefore assume which is correct that I can switch on or switch off the drill down capability as you wish within a dashboard so here when I click on the plus sign it will expand to show me the members associated with direct costs um, that are inside the HFM system that I am connecting to in my example so here it's showing me four particular levels and yes there is a further plus sign so if I wish to drill down a little bit further I can do um, I can also drill into the data a little bit more so here I'm looking at legal information I would like to drill into this data um, a little bit lower down and I do that by moving this gray bar at the top over to legal and what that's doing is it's changing the chart below so now I'm looking at legal from a group perspective which is common communications Inc you can see by the title at the top but the chart is showing me the individual entities so here are the four entities that make up that total cost associated here now I'm trying to identify why we seem to have an overspend in South America so on the chart itself as I hover over the chart we can actually see that I'm looking at the actuals um, versus the forecast amount and I've gone beyond the forecast amount so the charts telling me I can click onto it to drill down so I will do I'll click onto the chart what you will notice is at the top of the screen my entity has changed automatically to South America so without even using that drop down at the top I've just clicked on the chart to actually drop down to the next level below again I can see here that Argentina seems to be performing quite good on these costs Mexico are a bit of a problem and so are Brazil so let's go ahead and look at Brazil 
I can drill down onto the Brazil and it's taken me down to the next level. So we have three individual departments within Brazil where we seem to have dramatically gone over cost spend within the legal department. What I'm interested in is whether anybody from that particular region have made any comments and we can see at the bottom of the screen there are no comments. So what I would like to do is use the collaboration and communication feature and start a conversation internally to actually ask my counterpart over in Brazil exactly what is going on. And I do that by coming up to this feature here, which is start a conversation. I want the title to be in here. Just give it a title and choose the participant in South America, which is Michael here. Start a conversation. What we'll actually see in CXO Cockpit now is I'm going to add a new tab at the bottom of the screen called the Conversation tab. It allows me now to, you know, go ahead and actually write something. So here I can type a note, send an email. Sorry, click on the send button. So it's now recorded my question here from me. We can see that there's two people participants in this in individual conversation. And yes, I can have more individuals within the conversation as I wish. Now, what they will receive when they um, were, if they're in the system is a notification like this. We can see here at the top, these two little speech bubbles are showing that I have three outstanding questions on how, uh, that have been sent to me that I haven't answered. Um, but equally, as you can see from this particular list, I can scroll down here. There are my three questions that I haven't answered related to cash flow, full-time employees, trade receivables, and so on. But right at the top will be the Brazil costs for legal. There's my question. Now, if I'm in the system, it will show me that I have a question for me. If I'm not in the system, it will send an email to me and it will tell me that basically a question has been asked for you to log back in and answer that question. When the individual logs back in, they click on the link, it will take them straight away to this dashboard, highlighted legal, highlighted down into Brazil, and the question will be available here for them to ask. So you're basically taking almost a screenshot, but in real time and sending it to any colleague within the business that has access to CXO Cockpit. And that conversation can go backwards and forwards. You can even add new pe people to that particular um, conversation over time. So that's a great way of collaborating and communicating on specific as aspects within the business. And you can have as many conversations going as you wish. So what I'd like to do now is just um, share with you a couple of other features. Any of these dashboards can be taken, dropped into PowerPoint, PDF and Excel, as you can see here. So wherever you see the symbol, you'll be able to do so. What I'd like to do is show you how we automate the production of the reporting pack. So. Let's do that by um, sharing with you a little workflow that I like to use, which is to create um, a report pack and do a little bit of commentary collection and roll it up to the group level. So first of all, to do that, um, I'm going to just share with you. Sorry, I've just jumped into the wrong presentation. Sorry, I thought I had this open. Just apologize for this delay. So I have here a, a small workflow I just would like to share with you, which is collecting commentary. So first of all, uh, here is the organizational structure. As we can see, I've already explained it to you. I'm going to wear two hats for this particular explanation. We can see a group level financial controller and we can see four regional financial controllers. What I'm going to do is create a reporting pack which has an agenda page, profit and loss statement, balance sheet, and so on. I'm going to specifically add the commentary to the profit and loss statement. I'll do this with three simple steps. The first one is each of the regional financial controllers will write some commentary to explain what's going on within the P&L statement. They will submit it to the group level. The group financial controller will aggregate all of that commentary do some final editing and add it to the monthly report pack. And then, of course, we'd like to view the report pack and send it out to 
um, to a particular audience. So just to come back to the hierarchy for a second. So what we can see here is that I'm going to just concentrate on the European Financial Controller commentary. That's because I've already added commentary for USA, South America and Asia. I only need to do this once. I also then need to roll those four comments up to the group level and do that. So I'm going to simplify that particular process. Um, that's very similar to a real life um, uh, process anyway. So let's go back to the demonstration environment. Let me first of all show you this feature, which is our storyboard feature. So here we have the ability to create report packs. We'll call them storyboards. When I click on that feature, I, a, a new menu box is opened up. We can see here I can maintain the storyboards. I can create a new storyboard. I can even search for one because you, as you can appreciate within an organization, there may be lots of uh, report packs already created. The one that I'm interested in is this particular one, which is the monthly management report pack. I wish to create an agenda page um, and then the P&L, which is going to be inserted between number one and number two. And then there will be five pages in this report book that we will come back to here and then we'll view them in the various modes that we have available. So let me just close that for a second. Let me go to the P&L and find the profit and loss statement that I'm going to add to the reporting pack. So here is the profit and loss statement with all the drill down functionality that you saw earlier. What we can see at the bottom is my point of view comments are blank because at the group level, we can see I'm at the at Comma Communications Inc. group level. Um, I haven't written any comments yet. Let me click onto the subsidiary tab, which says in brackets three. So that indicates that three of the subsidiaries have made a comment, which we can see them here listed here. As I indicated previously, they had already been completed. What I need to do is add the European one. So in the real world, the financial controller for Europe will sign in. I'm just essentially going to jump down to the European level. And I've put my hat on now, which is my regional European financial controller. I now need to add some commentary to explain what's going on in Europe. Now, by using this drop down, and as you'll probably remember, my region is made up of two countries, Italy and the United Kingdom. Now, I can see that two comments have been made, which means that my two countries have done their job. They've already entered a comment for Italy, and United Kingdom, but I need to bring that data into here. And I do that simply by clicking on this icon. And I have a feature here, which is called copy children to my point of view comments. So I click it. As soon as I click it, it brings in the data from this tab, copies it into this tab. What I now need to do is do some edits because I need to just make sense of this from a European perspective. But just for the purposes of my demonstration, what I intend to do is essentially just show you um, the editing capability. So you can see here, I've made some changes for my particular region. I'm just going to put this in a, in a different color, save these comments. And obviously these comments, as you can see here, are different to the comments written by the individual two um, regions, but now it's available at the group level. So that's my commentary done for the European level. I would now need to send a note to my group financial controller to indicate that that's been done. But as soon as I save it, it is actually available at the group level. So I'm signing in now at the group level. We can see here the entity Comma Communications Inc. at the group level. We can see my subsidiary comments in brackets now four. So because I saved it at the lower level, it's automatically saved the entity Europe. You can see my comments and I did a second ago. It indicates a time and date stamp in terms of audit control when it was done. I'm based in the UK, so that's why we've got an hour behind here. Um, and I would like to bring all that comments, those four comments, into my point of view commentary. So the same as what the European guy did. Let's just do exactly the same. But for the group level, 
let me do my final edit to show my value of my European, uh, sorry, is the group level controller. So let's assume I made some comments here. Let's make this uh, slightly different so we can see it stands out and how it's different to the rest. I want to also bring in some documentation to support my particular um, reasoning. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm bringing in a chart that I've got. I want to basically save my comments. As you can see here, I've added my group level insight. I've added a chart. I've left the comments below. I could have changed it if I wish to. Um, I've just re remembered that I'd like to also add an attachment. So I might like to bring in some additional documentation to support my submission to the board. And I have some data um, that I have like to attach. And you can see here, I've got some supporting Excel data that I can attach to this particular report pack. So I've actually completed the group level commentary now. All I need to do is just add it to the storyboard. And we do that by simply clicking on this button, which is add to storyboard. As soon as I do so, I'm now presented with a new menu that just asks me which storyboard would I like to add it to. If you recall, we said the monthly management report pack. Where would I like to insert the page after? I said I was going to insert it after the agenda page. Add the page and that's done. So essentially we can see here in the bottom right, it's telling me that this storyboard has been added with that particular page. So what's happened now is that, that this dashboard still exists as a dashboard for those folk who have the security access to view this information. But secondly, a copy of it is now being added to the storyboard. So when we go back to the storyboard menu and we find the man management storyboard pack, we can see the agenda page is the first one. The P&L is the second one. The conditional line item comments is the third, fourth and fifth, as we can see here. So very quickly, in my short demonstration of only a couple of minutes, I've been able to roll up commentary from the lowest levels. I could have gone down to Italy in the UK, but you could see how the process of that, it's just using the editor and then each time copying and rolling it up to the level above and making any edits and changes. Once I've got it right up to the group level, I've then just inserted that particular page into this report book. Now, once this report book's created, I don't need to insert a new page for next month. All I need to do is just bring in the new data from next month, which will be automated anyway, and just do my workflow all over again, but this time commenting on not September, but on the actual October month. So it's very simple once the process has been set up. And if an organization changes and adds new reports and dashboards, they want to um, uh, add those, well, you've just seen how easy it is for me to insert new report pages into a reporting pack. So what I'd like to do now is show you the different options that are available to users in once these five pages have been created. Well, the first question that, that we always get asked is, um, I'd still like to be able to export it to PDF, PowerPoint or Excel. Well, there is a feature as you can see here, I can actually do so. Essentially though, this will actually create a screenshot of each of these into the three mediums, drop down uh, a download onto the desktop, and you can then as a user send it off to anybody, send an uncontrolled copy of the data to any user, as you currently do, if I dare say, or as your end customers currently do. Um, probably a better way <clears throat> is to actually share um, this particular dashboard with another user. So we can do this by essentially I'm um, seeing who has access. So you can see here, I'm the supervisor. I have access and I'm somebody who can edit it. I've also shared it previously with the European user and a USA user. But again, as we add new users, you can even add new people to it. Um, and you can change the roles of what they are, whether they can edit it or whether they can view it. You can actually switch this on and off in this particular area here. And essentially, as soon as I save this, it will again send them a notification um, at the top of the screen indicating that um, a, a dashboard or a report pack has been shared with them. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to actually send a link to, let's say, an iPad. 
So if one of your users is using an iPad, then you might want to what we call create a view. So here I can click on this particular link. This then will generate a URL, as you can see here, copy the following link to your browser, send this link to a mobile device. Now, I'm not going to send it to anybody because I'm doing a demo online, but to show how this would work, I'm going to copy this link. So this is the link I would essentially be emailing. Open up a new tab, drop this um, copy and go into that particular uh, URL. And here is the same report pack that I've just created. There are fundamentally a few changes that you will notice um, at the top of the screen. We don't have the menu um, folders. The point of view settings and the filters are actually set. So this is so in the previous setup page, I didn't show you, but essentially you have the ability when you're sending it out to decide on what the audience can actually see. So here I left it at the group level. Let me go to the second page by using this play functionality at the top of the screen. Here is the P&L. When I scroll down to the bottom, we can see the group level insight, the chart, even the attachment I can actually open as well and all the commentary. So here is um, a really great view of the actual information. But in addition to that, I can actually interactively um, view this information at a, at a deeper level. So if I wanted to understand what was going on in net sales, then I can. I can expand it. If I want to see what was going on in home cinema, I can highlight home cinema and look at the history since 20 uh, since April 15 of the trend um, uh, of actual versus budget. I can zoom into a particular area. If I wanted to see the um, different channels that I'm selling to, then I can do by using this drop down feature. So not only have I sent a link to an individual on an iPad or a mobile device or even a desktop computer, as I've done here, um, you can actually it's it's a bit like receiving a PDF document, but very interactive. I can go to the next one and so on within the individual report pack itself. So there are many features within CXO Cockpit, which are, uh, today is just meant to be a flavor um, for yourselves in terms of CXO Cockpit. So I'm going to stop at this particular moment in terms of the demonstration and go back to my presentation because there are a couple of questions I can see on the panel, which are asking me about the value of the solution itself to individual partners. So I just wanted to cover some of those aspects. So what is the partner benefit? So they cover four individual areas, strategic relevance to your organization, the ability to generate additional revenue, uh, what support we would give to individual partners and what are the rewards um, that you can see in terms of generating dollars for your business. So st strategic relevance, let's take that one first. Well, of course, now, depending upon what you offer as an individual um, consultancy to your individual customers, we've got lots of different customers, uh, sorry, consultancies and partners who are agnostic to, um, to technology and take um, a more of a customer view uh, of solving a particular problem and where appropriate, we'll select a technology that could be CXO Cockpit and now provide um, a C-level um, solution because remember a lot of our solution um, delivers value to the CFO level within management so you've now got the ability to have that visibility at a high level um, so th there's ways of thinking about strategic relevance to your portfolio of individual products or services that you offer to your customers and how you can increase those customers and drive new business. Obviously, revenue growth potential, so new business, new opportunities, revenue growth can come from a number of different um, outlets. Obviously, there is the cost of CXO cockpit in terms of licensing cost, which I will cover in a couple of moments, but essentially you would get a percentage of those deals that are generated. There is also servicing opportunities through implementing CXO Cockpit, um, advising and consultancy. So it's an area that we tend to be, if I dare say, slightly weak at. We're very good implementing CXO Cockpit, 
but we don't spend a lot of time in actually helping the customer rethink the way that they go about their reporting process and how it could be actually improved. So there's some advisory and consultancy days that could be added to a particular deal with a customer, adding your additional value that you can bring to that particular organization. And then, of course, there's support where well, we have um, individual product support, but then there's um, ongoing support from servicing that customer. Maybe they don't want to build their own dashboards. Maybe they want you guys to actually support that for them. So that's additional revenue post sale. In terms of what we would do, well, we would actually work together with you on joint marketing campaigns. So how do we reach new customers? How do we reach your new customers? So that's a good thing. 50-50, we will work with you on um, generating leads. Um, we have a partner portal, which allows you to register um, individual leads um, and find out what's going on with those individual leads. If we see some leads that are coming in from our website and wish to share with you, there will be visible through the partner, partner portal as well. And then of course you will be assigned an individual um, sales individual such as myself for my region. I would work with those partners in my region to support any activities in terms of presenting CXO cockpit in the best light in front of customers. So in terms of reward, let's just very quickly look at um, an overview of percentages. But there are two types of um, partners that we work with, a referral partner. Now, most organizations start at this level. They essentially say, well, I'd like to you know, see how this uh, relationship goes. I'd like to make a couple of referrals where I know the CXO cockpit would be very, very um, beneficial to that end customer. And that starts off, as you can see here, 10% commission against the, so, um, the cost of CXO cockpit sold. Um, into that individual customer. Essentially, we would lead uh, the sales cycle um, for that particular work, but your role would be to essentially furnish CXO with individual leads for that particular benefit to be rewarded to yourselves. And then the second part is the full sales partner. And this is essentially once trained, the ability for you to achieve a higher percentage of the license fee, as you can see here by the different um, color statuses and then of course there is um, implementation um, renewals um, consultancy and services as we discussed as well previously um, if you're delivering the full implementation without CXO cockpit support then essentially you will for you know whatever your day rate is if it's a thousand euros a day that's what you charge that's what you get so therefore there's that beneficial aspect as well OK, so typically um, the uh, strategic partnership model is one of collaboration. It starts with training and education. We then need to think about positioning. What is the proposition and who is the target audience that you traditionally work with? And how can we reach new areas uh, within your existing business and within new uh, businesses? And then we think about creating some campaigns with our marketing team with possibly your marketing team or individuals to actually make that happen to reach the um, the target audience. Now, I'm just going to check to see if there are any questions. I'm coming to the end of my webinar, so just give me one second. OK. <clears throat> There don't seem to be any questions coming through from the target audience here. Um, so everybody, thank you very much for attending today's session. I'm going to leave my contact details on the screen. If you have any questions and you wish to reach out to me, even though it might be not applicable for your individual region, I will connect you with the relevant people um, across CXO Cockpit globally. Thank you very much for attending and goodbye.